Thank you, everyone. Welcome to our project, The Dance Machine. I would like, in the beginning, to give you an overview of what is a dance machine. It's basically a generator, but what does it generate? It generates moves, general movements. It not only dance, it can generate any kind of movements. Basically, you input some uh, past movements and it gives you future movements. What we want to uh, explain first, why are we doing this project? The reason why we are doing this project uh, in the gaming industry and animation industry and movies generally, uh, there are so many advancements now that people are comp competing to make the best real movement of animation or animals. As you can see here, it's easier to make creature movements or animated characters. You can see the amount of effort and time that is being uh, spent to reach that. Uh, and uh, basically, our idea is to train a model that can make this animation without making all of this effort. Another use case is to reanimate characters that does not exist anymore. Charlie Chaplin or Michael Jackson, by training our model into learning their moves and then be able to generate new movements. And for any uh, machine learning problem, we try first to discuss the feasibility of this problem. And to discuss the feasibility of this problem, we have to ask ourselves, how can human learn dancing? The average human, when he wants to learn a dance, what he does? He basically watch a video of a dancer or watch a dancer. And at the beginning, he tries to mimic this person. And only then he can start to make this dance. However, this is not making him a dancer. What he needs actually is to, to watch many videos and to train as many times as possible. So in the end, he is able to have a general sense of the movement of this dance. And from there, we decided to do our model in the same way. How can a machine learn dancing? Our approach is compiling as many videos of a certain dance as possible, and then let our machine learn these videos, train it, and then we are able to predict or generate new movements that's based on the style that it had learned. One of the generative models else that are existing in the market right now, uh, many, many generation mo uh, models like text generation, image generation, audio, uh, like text generation, like GPT-2, for example, everyone are using it right now uh, in Google or emails or chat. It predicts what you want to say by inputting the past uh, input. The, uh, what about movement prediction? In our case, we have some challenges. We will need to detect the movement of a person in a video to train our model as well on the detected data. After that, we will be able to generate new movements. So our approach basically is divided into six parts. First, data, getting as much videos as we can, of dances and then post detection where we can detect the movement in this data. After that, loading the data into our training model and then we can predict or generate new movements. And after that, we can visualize this movements into animation if you wish. For the gathering data part, as you can see here, we could gather about 10 hours of dancing, solo dancing person into a compiled video. And from there, if you look at the videos, we are not really interested to get all the video. However, we are only interested in getting the movement of the person in this video. And to do so, we used an open source library called MediaPipe that is developed by Google 
In this library, dividing the human parts into 33 movement points. And these points, each point is a coordinate x, y, z, since it is a three-dimensional environment. And from there, we can get our data. And this part, Muhammad will explain further. So thank you very much. So basically, uh, what we get from the media pipe and we extract, we extract the coordinates of the joint that this has been shown by my colleagues. So as you can see, we have a tabular data. The columns are coordinates of the joints and total is 99. And the rows are the frames sequentially in time. So when I talk about the time, that means that our problem is somehow time series. And we have a lot of feature that moves and change. And that shows that we have a multivariate time series. But this is our, we need to somehow change the data to the input and output that we would like to have for our modeling, basically. As you can see, our input can be the data for the past events. For example, here, past four events, the frames that we had, and we could predict the next frame. And that that's can be a hyperparameter, so we can have more, look more in the past and we can predict more in the future. Generally, we uh, try to predict just one in the future. After having our data, then we are prepared to go to modeling. And the modeling that we use is basically deep learning that uses LSTM layers. So it seems simple. So input comes to LSTM layers, can be multiple LSTM, bidirectional or normal. And then it goes to dense layers. Also, it can be very deep or not, doesn't matter. And it tries several times. And then we have the outputs. So we are happy that maybe it's working. So as you can see, try to work it, we need an initial movement. So this, this initial means here that this is the past and the memory of our input to generate a new data. So this is basically done by the human. And we want, after that, continue to new movements. And let's see what can we start as a next point. Yes, we somehow failed. <laughs> it seems that the person go to the right and just starts there. But we are not disappointed, really. We are not disappointed. We are still hoping that making something better. So we decide to have a look at another model. So as you remember, I already talked about that our input, our output is somehow coordinates value directly. But what about being there just a distribution, normal distribution, for instance? Then instead of directly predicting the value, we just need to predict the features of the normal distribution. For Gaussian, just we need to know what is the mean and the standard deviation for each value. And we hope that that's working. And also we change the loss function accordingly as well. So let's see. And yes, yeah. No, our guys broke his leg. It's even worse than before. Yeah, but it's not end, it's not end. So, but what we are thinking is that maybe we can do something else. If we're thinking as the whole points in the body, it means that probably our dense movement somehow, for instance, if I move my head, it's also related to, to the hands that I have. So instead of just single output, which is whole body, why I don't make them as a multiple? With all of the body, I use one model for the head in parallel other models for the other part of the body. And uh, interesting to, to, interestingly, it can have a different models. Here we use all of them as the same uh, structure and architecture. And what we got it? Oh, yeah. Our guys no moves at least. It doesn't seem very real dancing yeah, somehow, <laughs> but it at least moves. And the thing that it's show that, the thing is that it shows that, okay, after some, sometimes it become do the reputation. So I would like to go to the conclusion. It seems that the multi-part model that we called it are promising. Maybe as a future, somebody can use different layers and models for, for each part and then do the parallel. Or we can use 
uh, more, let's say, dance styles as an input, then the dynamic, probably dynamic the first one changes. Maybe we can define a keyframe. What does it mean? Means that we say that, okay, start dance from this position, from the whatever it's a history, and give me the dance that has a, uh, let's say, destination position. This is another idea. The other idea used other models. We had a very quick experiment on the TCM, which somehow have elastic and convolutional neural networks. And it shows a little bit good at the first frames that we had also, but again, the repetition happened. So we would like to say our special thanks to Dr. Tristan Behrens to be our mentor for his fruitful comments and discussions. We would like also to say our thanks to our DSR teacher for the, for the insight that they're giving to us. And last but not least, I would like to, oh, we would like to say uh, thanks to Batch 27 the students or people that we had. Thank you for sharing your knowledge with us. Thank you for being our friend.